A judge has sentenced a man to life in prison for the brutal stabbing death of his estranged wife. And it's the apparent motive that is not going to sit well with uh, many folks out there who uh, use, many of you who use, social networking sites. Prosecutors say Edward Richardson became enraged when his soon-to-be ex-wife changed her Facebook status from married to single. Let's bring in our Prime News correspondent, Rochelle Carey. You've been putting the pieces together for us. Obviously, you've got our attention. What, give us the details. What happened? Here? All right, Mike, it took a jury in England less than three hours to convict Richardson last week. The judge actually called the murder of 26-year-old Susan Richardson an act of brutal mutilation. This is what happened. The couple separated late last year, and she had been staying with her parents for about three weeks when she changed her online status to single. Prosecutors say when Sarah didn't return Edward's messages, he broke into her parents' house, stabbed her to death in a frenzied, brutal attack, and then tried to kill himself. Her parents say he violated their home, saying there simply aren't the words to describe how Sarah's death and the awful way she died has affected us. Edward Richardson will spend a minimum of 17 years in prison. What an unbelievably sad story and then the trigger in the story Mike. exactly and we'll pick it up there uh, Rochelle thanks uh, join me now to talk about this uh, attorney Lisa Bloom she's also host of in session and rejoining us once again Cooper Lawrence a psychology researcher Cooper let's start with you are you do you really think that the status change on Facebook from married to single could trigger that for this guy well, I mean, traditionally, men that kill their wives or estranged ex-wives or, or somebody in this situation um, follow a certain pattern, and there usually is a trigger that sets off the rage. So I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't. Obviously, it's not Facebook's problem, but uh, this is what set it off. It could have been anything, and this just happened to be what it was. Okay. So what do you think going on in, in his mind? Was seeing her change that status from married to single, was that like seeing her with another guy? Could you um, in a way, it to I mean, that? If, you look, if you look at the research on men who do who do kill their wives or, or ex-wives, um, it, it follows a very specific pattern. Either there's jealousy, which was clearly here. Right. Um, there's drugs or alcohol. I think he. I, I don't know if you reported this, but there were drugs or alcohol involved with this. Yeah, story. cocaine and alcohol. Right. Right. Absolutely. Um, some, sometimes they have a, uh, a criminal history, which I'm not sure if that's true in this case. Mm -hmm. um, but they also have something called uh, male sexual propriety, which means the idea of the wife being with anyone else will send them into a rage. So this would trigger. They, they, he sees now that she's saying she's single. That means he can picture her with somebody else. That is what sets off the rage. Wow. Uh, Lisa, this is the second case like this. You're doing a little research. You got named Wayne Forrester basically did the same thing. You think we're going to see more of this? I do, and here's why. I'm an avid Facebooker myself, so I understand a little bit how the system works. This is like standing on your rooftop with a megaphone saying, I'm dumping this guy. It's mm. over between him and me. It's a very humiliating thing to have all of the people who are closest to you in your world see on their news feed on Facebook that she is now single. I mean, it used to be when people got divorced, you'd tell a close friend, they might tell a family member, but it could take years before everybody found out. Right. Now it's instantaneous. She says she's single. He says they're only separated. I certainly am not blaming her in any no. way for this horrific act, but I can understand the psychology. And I think as people become more and more proficient on Facebook, and look, 200 million people are on Facebook right now, I think we are going to see more of this because people don't use the privacy settings and they don't think about how humiliating such a simple status change can be. Okay, great points there. By the way, if you want to call in, one eight seven seven tell hln is the number. So you're saying, and again, we're not trying to blame the victim in any way, Lisa. Of but you're not. saying... There's some MySpace slash Facebook wisdom that needs to be applied here that she may, maybe not the best move to lay it out there. This was well, three weeks after they were separated. <laughs> Right? Yeah, exactly. And I've known a lot of people and in much less horrific circumstances, but they change it from in a relationship to it's complicated. And someone just goes haywire over that. How dare you? We didn't even talk about it. I mm. mean, this is a brave new world. And again, it goes out on a news feed to all your closest friends and family. And in some cases, I mean, I have several thousand Facebook friends. So if I put something like that up, it would go out to a lot of strangers as well as all the people closest to me. Hey, Cooper, uh, with the, do you think that this guy was going to hurt her regardless or is this someone who's so tied to the, the social networking site that that was too much of a trigger? Can you read that for us? Well, the trigger could also have been, had he seen her out with another guy, anything that would have set off that male jealousy, that, that, that sexual propriety. Mm -hmm. So it's not that it was Facebook. It just happened to be Facebook in this, this instance. But this is somebody who clearly has, shows the patterns of somebody who was going to be violent with her at some point. Okay, Lisa, let, uh, be, uh, I, you're more of an expert than I am on Facebook. <laughs> I'm a novice, uh, to be honest with you. So how can, can we protect ourselves? 
ourselves in these situations. What do we have to do? Because like you said, I mean, if you hit click what the everyone button, everyone's seeing your business, right? Right. And that's not wise. That's right. I mean, people forget that the Internet is not anonymous. To the contrary, I mean, it's very intimate and it's very revealing. And people are alone with the computer. They type something on and they hit send, or in the case of Facebook, they hit post. And it feels very intimate. And yet, you are announcing, you are broadcasting to the entire world your personal business. You have to be careful when you post a photo, when you post something on your status. You know, a lot of teenagers and young people have gotten in trouble for posting ridiculous things on Facebook or MySpace. And similarly, even as a status change, even something as simple as married to it's complicated to it's single can have profound consequences. Hey, Cooper, real quick, are we becoming a little too attached emotionally to these social networking sites? No, the opposite. It's the one thing that keeps us communicating with each other. If some of us in the lives we lead, this is the best way to communicate. Mm. I, think, I think this is just something that was going to happen. It just happened to be through Facebook. That's just the world we're living in now. Okay. I still prefer a face-to-face -face chat. Let me just say <laughs> well, that. Mike, I'm old you're school. always welcome to be my Facebook friend. Thank you. All right, I'll, I'll friend me or I'll friend you or we'll tag each other, whatever. The, uh, I still got to learn works. the lingo. Okay. <laughs>